Welcome to Insignia Linguistics Academy and here we are with an ICSC speaking paper. As this is a very long video, I have divided the video into part 1 and part 2 because I am going to cover all the speaking cards possible in May June 2022 question paper. Uh, see some rules before we go to the Cambridge IGCSC speaking exam paper 3 of 0520 French. Here are some basic instructions given to the candidate before the exam. The candidates have 10 minutes of preparation time before the test. The exam is divided into three parts. The role topic conversation 1 and topic conversation 2. The preparation time given is 10 minutes as you enter the exam hall and the greeting is the non-assessed part it approximately is 30 seconds the teacher makes you feel at home and starts the role play so the teacher introduces you uh, with certain details like cat a candidate number the center number your name and all that that takes around 30 seconds of recording then the recording starts for the role play the candidate needs to Respond to transactional questions, for example, accomplish a task or ob obtain goods or services. Then comes the topic conversation. The teacher will announce that we are shifting to part B or part 2. Then you, you are given a topic and you have 4 minutes to discuss on the topic. Generally, the topic area A or B is given in the first topic conversation we would further go ahead and see what is a or b and then uh, the second topic is for c d and e that is to share views opinions and experiences how are the marks awarded role play it's two marks for each response so each response you have to be very clearly stating your response suppose the question is when you should mention a time frame if it's where you should mention a place like that they will check whether you are forming the proper good sentence with proper tenses so it is going to be for 10 marks topic conversation there are two kinds of marks given there one for communication one for quality of language and we will see how the marks are awarded on 50 later in this first let's see the role play mark scene so remember the marking scheme is applied separately for each response up to two marks is available for each response that means a candidate can get 0 1 1.5 or 2 when you are awarding marks this is for the teacher and the teacher is avoiding avoiding marks they start from the bottom most band and work upwards now how is the band decided first one is no creditable response is given then you get a zero next is there are errors and that is impeding the communication that is the answer is not clear it's part partially communicated or the meaning is not clear then you are given one mark and then the two marks is given when the information is communicated okay the language is also appropriate to the situation and it's accurate minor errors like adjective endings use of prepositions are allowed at this stage so role play is quite easy an exam don't get tense just answer it out of the question when we are awarding marks as examiner, we start always from the bottom band and we go upwards. Find the band which fits the candidate's performance. So, use the following gu uh, guidance. Uh, this is again to the teachers. If uh, your work is convincingly meeting the level statement, I will always award you the highest mark. If your work adequately meets the level statement, I will award the most appropriate mark or the middle range of marks. 
If it is just not meeting it, then I will award the lowest mark. So there are only three marks here, lowest, middle, range and high. So let's look at how are marks awarded for the topic conversations. I told you one for communication, another for your language skills. So the first communication marks, zero is awarded for no response. One, two, three for poor response. That is, you have frequent difficulty in understanding the question, has a great difficulty in replying. Communication is one or two basic pieces of information relevant to the question. Then you are awarded only one to three marks. Four to six mark is for weak students who are having difficulties with many questions but still attempt to answer, so you are recognized for that and you communicate very simple information uh, responding to the questions. 7 to 9 marks are awarded for satisfactory answer. What is the meaning of sat satisfactory answer? Is you uh, want alternate questions to be provided, so you keep asking repetitive play or je ne comprends pas, je ne sais pas, something like that. And you are communicating most of the required information but occasionally you give in irrelevant information also and your very very simple and straightforward opinions so you're not coining the opinions properly then it's only satisfactory when do you call your response good okay you have to really respond well to the question you can use occasionally alternative questions so that is not like not permitted you can always say uh, je ne comprends pas uh, or je ne sais pas once maybe okay in the whole topic conversation communicate information should be always relevant okay almost always relevant sometimes you can develop ideas and opinions as you go and you give explanations and reasons for some answers so what is the best way to get full in this okay listen to me carefully you have to respond very confidently to the question so be loud into the mic the next one the next one is quality of language what kind of uh, quality should you have in your responses to get usually no creditable response gets zero again poor is limited range of structure and vocabulary which are almost inaccurate, poor pronunciation, you are hardly able to understand questions and you have very many serious errors, errors then you get only one, two, three, that is poor range. Weak range is limited structures, so you are just able to conjugate maybe present tense and not future or passe composé. Pronunciation can be understood with some effort, lots of hesitations and stilted them. Okay, then when you are putting a satisfactory reply, you get satisfactory mark like 7 to 9. Satisfactory use of supply, uh, structures listed in the syllabus, frequent errors, no problem. Satisfactory use of vocabulary with frequent errors and satisfactory pronunciation and fluency with frequent errors and hesitation. So hesitation is going to cost you a lot of marks. So be bold in whatever you say. That's what I would say my students all the time. And then comes good communication by good range of structures listed in the syllabus like you have to use amparpe, passe composé properly and also conditionally when it's necessary. You have to use if clauses, you have to use future tense, that's most important tense, future and future prosh. That is going to fetch you a lot of marks. You have to have a good range of vocabulary. You are permitted one or two errors, but very good pronunciation and fluency. In spite of all the errors and hesitation, a good attempt at proper tone and expression, intonation, they call it. Okay. So you can easily get 10 to 12 marks if you are speaking French in the French style. Okay. Not in the English or Spanish kind of style. Then comes very very good marks that is 30 to 15 usually a student getting 30 to 15 will have accurate use of wide range of structures structures listed in the syllabus like occasional errors accurate use of wide range of vocabulary 
very good pronunciation, fluency, intonation and expression. That's why we are here watching all these videos so that you can get that fluency, get that speed and no hesitations or very, very less mistakes. Okay. So this is what you have to practice. These are the list of uh, in IGCSE exam. Now we are going to go to the speaking test sample. Generally, the teacher in front of you will start the recording. So before the test, she starts or she or he starts your name. So she will start something like Mr. John Smith and the candidate number is 0031. The candidate name is, uh, for example, Anita Cheng and the candidate card number, the card number which you have and uh, they will tell the date and time of the exam. So all this is starting the conversation, making you feel at home. So they will check the sounds here at this stage. Then once that is over, then they will say bonjour. If you are a boy, you will say monsieur or mademoiselle. Ça va? Au revoir, comment c'est? Vous êtes prêt? So this is the stage to stop it. If you are not comfortable, any technical errors or you can just way with the teacher to stop it if you want to stop otherwise you can just continue all the best for your exams this is the meaning this is the signal of speaking test sample remember all these part of the exam till here doesn't have any marks okay non no check means uh, no marks for this let's start the actual marking time and remember the marking time starts with 4 plus 4 plus 2 so around 12 to 15 minutes is the participation time you have let's start the exam first let's see the role play mark scene so remember the marking theme is applied separately for each response up to two marks is available for each response that means a candidate can get zero one one point five or two when you are awarding marks this is for the teacher when the teacher is avoiding avoiding marks they start from the bottom most band and work upwards now how is the band decided first one is no creditable response is given then you get a zero next is there are errors and that is impeding the communication that is the answer is not clear it's part partially communicated or the meaning is not clear then you are given one mark and then the two marks is given should be very very clear you should start with bonjour monsieur je veux des tomates et des pommes de terre s'il vous plaît so you can list any vegetables you want then the second question is combien or or voulez-vous combien or voulez-vous that means how much do you want? So je veux un kilo de tomate et un demi kilo de pomme de terre. Again, you can give any uh, details here. Est-ce que vous aimez la cuisine française? Pourquoi? Okay. Oui, j'aime la cuisine française. Elle goûte très bien. J'adore ratatouille. Surtout. Quand est-ce que vous êtes arrivé en France? Qu'est-ce que vous avez déjà visité près d'ici? Je suis arrivé en France il y a deux semaines. J'ai déjà, déjà visité tout, tous les monuments à Paris et les musées. Et quelle autre activité voudriez-vous faire pendant votre séjour? Pourquoi? Je veux participer dans un concert et aussi visiter une express exposition de voitures à Rennes. So this is the first part of the conversation. It should take around two to two, two and a half minutes to finish this. So it's kind of spontaneous. The more spontaneous you are, the more confident you are. And remember the confidence gets a lot of marks. So be confident and all the best. Let's go to the second card. This is the second card where the professor is uh, going to be your French friend. 
and you yourself you are going to the uh, uh, seashore with your french friend and the teacher explains this scenario saying vous êtes chez un uh, vous êtes uh, au bord de la mer avec votre ami français je suis votre ami français so very very clear the instruction so the next step is going to be the starting of the conversation alors quel jour est-ce qu'on va so as a candidate you should say nous pouvons aller ce samedi il y aura peu de monde et il fera du soleil nous pouvons y aller vers 4 heures du soir so be very clear with the date and the time The second one, à quelle heure est-ce que tu veux quitter à la maison? The answer would be, nous pouvons quitter la maison vers 3 heures parce que la mer est un peu loin. So you're explaining the reason. You get marks for that. Préfères-tu y aller en bus ou en voiture? Pourquoi? So allow the teacher to finish the question. There will be some pauses in the question before pourquoi. Okay, so listen to the question and then start answering. Je préfère y aller en voiture. Papa peut nous y conduire parce qu'il ne travaille pas le samedi. The next question is, où voudrais-tu manger là-bas? Again, there is a pause there. Pourquoi? And then you're going to answer. Je voudrais manger dans le bistrot. Près de la plage, parce que j'ai entendu qu'on offre une variété de tapas d'espagnol là-bas. And the final question, qu'est-ce que tu as fait la dernière fois que tu es allé au bord de la mer? C'était avec qui? La dernière fois, quand je suis allé là-bas, j'ai bien amusé avec ma famille. Nous y étions pendant les vacances d'été et nous avons nagé. Ma seule cadette a ramassé les coquillages. So, coquillages and things like that, cadette. All these shows that you have a range of vocabulary. So, learn it up. So, let's go to the next one. The next card is going to say uh, you are woman and the professor is going to be chauffeur, chauffeur de taxi and she is going to start like this. Vous êtes en vacances en France, vous prenez un taxi pour aller en ville, je suis le chauffeur, chauffeur de taxi. So she will start the conversation again. She will say bonjour monsieur mademoiselle, où exactement allez-vous? So, think of all the possibilities, but I have answered it in a particular way so that it's easy for you to understand and go ahead with the oral exam. So, I have made the answers quite simple, yet with quite a range of grammar, grammar and vocabulary so that you can work fully. So, bonjour monsieur or madame. Je veux aller au Champ de Mar. Je vais visiter la Tour Eiffel. The next question is, d'accord. Et de quel pays venez-vous? Je viens du sud de l'Inde. Je suis indien. Je viens de Chennai. Qu'est-ce que vous aimez le plus en France? Pourquoi? Okay, so wait for the pourquoi question so that you can answer. J'aime les bateaux mouches et le métro de Paris. J'ai fait beaucoup de randonnées dans les parcs publics ici aussi. The next question. Quelle excursion touristique avez-vous faite pendant votre séjour dans votre région? C'était comment? So, This is about notre région. So, j'ai déjà visité le Louvre, le Grand Musée et la Notre-Dame de Paris. La cathédrale est énorme. J'ai bien aimé votre région et sa propre patrimoine. 
Patrimon means heritage and this is a good show of vocabulary. So the next question is, Qu'est-ce que vous aimeriez acheter comme souvenir avant de rentrer chez vous? So this question is clearly a conditional question. What would you like to buy as souvenir before returning to your house? So I have written or I am planning to say, comme souvenir, je vais, de, euh, je vais acheter de petites statues de monuments parisiens, surtout la Tour Eiffel. J'aimerais avoir beaucoup de photos comme souvenir de ce visite. So, that brings us to the end of this card. Next card. So, the next card, again, is very, very easy. Here again, your woman and the teacher's proprietor, the restaurant. So the teacher starts the conversation. She reads the question. Who shall a un petit job pour les vacances? Vous téléphonez à un restaurant à Paris. Je suis le proprietor or la proprietaire du restaurant. And she starts the conversation. Vous êtes de quelle nationalité, monsieur, madame? And then you've got to say... Bonjour, monsieur, euh, madame, euh, je suis indien, je viens de Chennai, du sud de l'Inde. So, be very, very clear, slowly and with good fluency, you say that, right? Quelle langue parlez-vous? That is the second question. So, je parle couramment l'anglais, le français, l'hindi et le tamoul. So, you can put whatever languages you know. And the third question is, qu'est-ce que vous avez déjà fait comme travail dans votre pays? C'était comment? Okay, so wait for the question to be over. Now, remember you are with the proprietaire uh, du restaurant. So you have to tell some experience related to serving in a restaurant or being a part of a restaurant. So I have answered it like this. J'ai déjà eu une expérience dans un restaurant de mon oncle en Inde. J'ai fait ça vers mi-temps. Fair enough, Fernando. Next question. Pourquoi voulez-vous travailler à Paris? Pourquoi voulez-vous travailler à Paris? Je veux travailler ici parce que je veux gagner de l'argent de poche. Je suis étudiant de l'université et ça coûte trop. Now, this is often found the students going for part-time jobs. That's why I have chosen it. Quand serez-vous libre exactement? Où allez-vous loger quand vous serez ici à Paris? So this has two questions. So listen to them carefully and then you can answer. Je serai libre tous les soirs de 4 heures jusqu'à 8 heures. Le weekend, je dois assister à un cours de français. Je vais me loger dans une auberge de jeunesse pour les uh, étudiants près de mon université. Now, this is the question about logic. That's why the answer is very big. So, take your time and answer it. But remember, it's around two to two and a half minutes which will take the exam. So, the next jeu de rôle, next jeu de rôle again, you are you yourself and your professor is going to be an ami belge belgian friend so she start or he starts the conversation votre ami belge est en vacances chez vous vous organisez une soirée au cinéma moi je suis votre ami belge so this is her statement or his statement and then he or she says quand est-ce que on va au cinéma on va au cinéma Part of the queue where you have to say, On peut aller au cinéma ce soir vers 4 heures. La séance est à 5 heures. So always say it in one or two sentences. Don't just stop it like vers 4 heures. Okay. Then you might not get the marks you want to. Okay. The next question. Le ci uh, cinéma est à quelle distance de la maison? Le cinéma Rex est un peu loin. Nous pouvons aller en voiture de papa. The next question. 
Quel sort de film as-tu vu la dernière fois que tu es allé au cinéma? La réponse, c'était comment? So you have to also describe how was it. So la dernière fois nous sommes allés voir un film de du Truffaut. C'était magnifique. Les acteurs interprétés par excellence. Again, this is one of the answers. You can do anything you want. You can just say the name of the movie itself. Yeah. So, prefer to regard the live film chez toi ou au cinéma. So, listen to the question. Again, there is a pause. There is a pourquoi. Okay. So, je préfère regarder les films au cinéma parce qu'on a beaucoup de restaurants et on s'amuse avec une grande foule. So, give your reasons very comfortably in present tense itself. Où est-ce qu'on va manger en vie après le film? Pourquoi? Again, that is the fifth question, so let's try answering it. Après le film, on va dîner dans un restaurant chinois assez proche. La cuisine y est magnifique. So, the pourquoi is also answered. So, be careful that you... Let's move on to the next uh, Jeu de rôle. In this jeu de rôle, you are vous-même and your teacher is the receptionist. She starts the conversation again. She, she or he says, Vous entrez dans un hôtel en France. Vous voulez une chambre. Je suis le réceptionniste or la réceptionniste de l'hôtel. And the conversation starter is, Combien de nuits voulez-vous passer à l'hôtel? So, very very uh, see some rules before we go to the Cambridge IGCSC speaking exam paper 3 of 0520 French here are some basic instructions given to the candidate before the exam the candidates have 10 minutes of preparation time before the test the exam is divided into three parts the role play the top Okay, here we are with the next uh, role play card and here again the professor is receptionist. So she will start the dialogue. She will say something like Pendant vos vacances au Québec, vous perdez votre sac dans un centre sportif. Vous parlez avec le, la récep réceptionniste du centre sportif. Je suis le, la réceptionniste. So the it's a sportive center, so remember to answer accordingly. 
So the next Jodo role, next role, Jodo role again, you are you yourself and your professor is going to be an Ami Belge, Belgian friend. So she starts or he starts the conversation. Votre Ami Belge est en vacances chez vous. Vous organisez une soirée au cinéma. Moi, je suis votre ami belge. So this is her statement or his statement. And then he or she says, Quand est-ce que on va au cinéma? Quand est-ce que on Let's go to the next role play card. So in the next role play card, your professor is going to be your Swiss friend and she's going to start the conversation. She's going to say something like, Votre ami Swiss vous rend visite, vous, vous organisez une excursion à la campagne. Je suis votre ami Swiss. So she'll start the conversation with, Quand est-ce que on va à la campagne? So you should. Alors, on peut y aller ce weekend. Je vais réserver les billets de train pour le vendredi soir. The next question is: Avec qui est-ce qu'on fait l'excursion? On fait l'excursion avec mes amis canadiens. On, on peut explorer les bois alpines. And then, qu'est-ce que tu, uh, tu as vu la dernière fois que tu as fait une excursion à la campagne? You can say something like, la dernière fois, je suis allé avec ma famille et nous avons trouvé les pistes dans les bois assez intéressantes. The next one is, est-ce que tu voudrais faire un pique-nique ou manger au restaurant? Pourquoi? So you can stick to the topic. You can say, on a beaucoup de restaurants, mais on peut faire un pique-nique à l'entrée du bois. Il y a des magasins qui offrent de bons paniers de pique-nique prêts à porter. The final question is, après ça, qu'est-ce que tu voudrais faire comme activité pendant l'excursion? Pourquoi? So be careful. This is all about excursion. And it's in the future, so you should start with On pourra explorer la nature avec de bois, beaux oiseaux et le paysage vraiment magnifique et l'air qui est pure et calme. So you have mentioned an activity. Okay? So let's go to the next card. Next speaking card, you are again you yourself and there is a patissier, patissière, your professor. So she starts or he starts the conversation. He says something like, Vous êtes dans une patisserie en France. Vous voulez acheter un gâteau d'anniversaire pour votre ami français. Je suis le patissier, patiss la patissière. Quelle sorte de gâteau d'anniversaire décidez-vous, monsieur, madame, mademoiselle? And 
your something like this you can say something like je veux un gâteau de chocolat avec beaucoup de crème vanille pour mon ami qui adore le chocolat so the next question will be quel âge a votre ami il a 12 ans il est mignon il a sa fête d'anniversaire demain, demain soir So the next one is, qu'est-ce que vous avez acheté comme cadeau pour votre ami? Again, pourquoi? J'ai acheté un grand roman d'Harry Potter pour son anniversaire car il aime les aventures et la lecture. Again, pourquoi? Factor is very important. Next one is, et comment allez-vous célébrer l'anniversaire de votre ami? So you can elaborate here, you can say, bon, nous allons fêter l'anniversaire avec une soirée chez lui, tous nos amis iront là avec le cadeau, nous chantons et nous danserons jusqu'au dîner et nous dînerons ensemble. The next question is, quelle est votre fête préférée dans votre pays? Qu'est-ce que vous organisez d'habitude comme activité pour cette fête? So be very clear about the fête. So, lui, j'adore la fête de Noël, c'est ma fête préférée. J'organise d'habitude la musique de la soirée. Tout le monde est mon choix de musique. Je serai leur DJ préféré. So, DJ préféré, you can say that, right? So, if you do like our video, press the like icon, share it with your friends who are preparing for the IGCSE exam. See you in the next video. And do subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this. And press the bell icon to get notified each time we post them. Okay, au revoir. A bientôt. Bonne chance.